Today is the big hearing at the Hawaii County Council. The Council Committee on Public Safety and Mass Transit is taking on Bill 79, which would prohibit genetically modified organisms on the Big Island. The measure has become extremely divisive. On one side, there are those who favor organic growing methods, concerned over the corporate reach of companies like Monsanto, the powerful multinational agricultural biotechnology corporation. On the other hand, papaya farmers, many of whom already use a transgenic, virus-resistant rainbow papaya to earn their living. They are backed by a number of the island's large farms and ranchers who say they depend on the science to survive. In today's timeline, we preview the meeting at the West Hawaii Civic Center in Kona by taking a look back at our coverage over the years on this issue. We start in 2008 when the same local governing body first took on the GMOs. The Hawaii County Council heard a bill to ban the use and testing of genetically modified coffee and taro. The island's taro farmers were joined by Hawaiian practitioners who were outraged at the idea that a company might try to tamper with the crop that is a cultural staple of the islands. I'm a taro farmer, a poi processor from Waipio Valley. I stand united with taro farmers. 100% from Waipio and a vast majority, uh, I'd say probably 99% of the taro farmers from around the state of Hawaii uh, in uh, standing up to the biotech companies and the UH researchers who want to manipulate our taro, who want to patent our taro, who want to take something that doesn't belong to them and, and profit from it. Farming is not rocket science, really is it, but it is a business. Well, these are genetically engineered crops, crops that have been, that the, the, the genome of the cell has been altered. There are many reasons that they do it. They're, they're, they do it to insert traits into the plant, either disease resistant, herbicide tolerance. Well, genetically engineered taro, uh, as a taro farmer, I have you know, concerns based on cultural issues, economic issues, and nutritional issues. This, this is a Chinese taro right here. Now, a similar looking leaf, it has a spot in here, but you can see the haw, the stem is different. It's a little purple up here. Huh? Uh, you know, taro is the very root of Hawaiian culture and to genetically manipulate uh, Haloa, the older brother of man, is again completely unacceptable and again it, it's, a, it's an insult to our kupuna and those who have passed, who passed down these varieties, these beautiful varieties of taro that were developed over centuries. There's nothing wrong with our Hawaiian varieties of taro. My taro is not sick. This one, it's not a very big one here. This but all these, the, the keiki that you can plant. So you have patches that you just grow for leaf, have other patches growing for the corn. You cut just a little bit of the root and then you can cut the leaf off and then that gets planted. Uh, taro uh, on the nutritional side is, is known worldwide as a hypoallergenic food. There are no allergies to, to taro worldwide, so people can eat it. As a poi processor, we provide our poi to babies. It's the first food they eat all the way up to the full life spectrum, to kupuna. It's the last food they eat here on this uh, earthly plane. And no allergies to that. By introducing genes from other plant species like wheat and rice, um, you create proteins that are very likely to be uh, allergenic. And so to lose that uh, hypoallergenic qualities of our staff of life that has nourished the Hawaiian people for thousands of years is completely unacceptable. And that's one of the things they were talking about genetically engineering things to try and uh, you know it's all make it resistant to this stuff but you just experiment with the variety that grows best in your area rather than getting into this genetic modification. On an economic level again the issue of genetic engineering really is an issue about patenting and owning plant varieties. U.S. patenting law says is if you uh, genetically manipulate and engineer a plant, you now can own that plant. You patent it and own it. When you own it, you can sell it. And there's already precedents uh, from the University of Hawaii in trying to patent our Hawaiian varieties that have been manipulated to try to sell back to the farmers. Uh, with royalties, with price per huli, per, per cutting of, of, of taro. And again, so this puts a burden, an economic burden on us. Also, island coffee farmers stood up against genetic experimentation with their crop, which, when grown in Kona, enjoys a special gourmet status. In the case of um, coffee, it has only been to uh, create a controlled ripening 
so that they can ripen all at the same time, and it's also to create a genetically engineered uh, caffeine-free coffee. With coffee, um, we would lose our specialty status. Um, all, all conventional and organic farmers would lose specialty status, and then of course organic farmers could lose their organic status. And we just wouldn't be able to get the price that we get. You know, people, GMO does not, you know, if you had a big equal sign, big non-equal sign, GMO gourmet not, does not equal. <laughs> many, many places in the world will not take GMO coffee. And so if they introduce GMO coffee into Kona, contamination will happen. You know, it's been proven worldwide. Uh, you cannot just isolate a, a, a crop. And so the, the Kona coffee farmers have economically everything to lose. Well, with coffee, um, a coffee is pollinated by bees. It doesn't need the bees, it is actually self-pollinated, but um, where I live, for instance, there are thousands and thousands of bees in my area. And the bees can travel a, a six-mile diameter, three-mile radius. And so a farm three miles away or four miles away, um, we have no way of knowing those farmers. And so, you know, we can't really talk to our neighbors about, hey, are you growing a GMO? You know, not to mention that we, even if we did know, we wouldn't be able to protect our coffee. We would get the pollination and then that bean would be GMO in the first generation because it goes right to the seed. And in coffee, we do consume the seed. It was during this time that we met Adolf Helm, at the time a minority voice in opposition to the GMO coffee and taro ban. Well, I'm with HCIA, which is uh, it's called Hawaii Crop Improvement Association, and it's a trade uh, organization that's comprised of uh, uh, seed corn companies uh, here in Hawaii. I work for Dow AgroScience, but we firmly feel that no legislation is necessary that would impose a ban on genetic engineering research on taro that would have implications to the science and research technology here in, in Hawaii. It's just they, they believe that, you know, once once anything like this passes, it's the slippery slope to, you know, the downfall of all GMO or slash biotech crops. Perhaps um, other counties would follow suit and uh, it, it could have implications on the research, uh, agriculture research in general in Hawaii. The bill was passed by the council. It was vetoed by the administration of Mayor Harry Kim, but the council managed to override the veto. Things were quiet for a time. The only signs of possible trouble in the GMO war were attacks on papaya trees in Kapoho, carried out in consecutive years at the same time of year. The fields that were hacked to pieces were all growing GMO papaya varieties, as do many farms in this region of Puna. See, we was going to come this morning and spray, yeah? that was our plan, but then we were putting water inside a tank and then one of the farmers oh the grower because his one is up there too yeah i think three acres his one three of us and then he came here early in the morning like six o'clock he called us he said oh our papaya is doing cut them down already yeah so by seven o'clock we got here and yeah we saw this the attacks were declared to be acts of environmental terrorism they were never officially linked to any sort of anti-GMO activity. The farmers themselves didn't even think it had anything to do with GMO either, but authorities considered it to be a possibility. I really know that those guys do that. He knows how to cut the papaya. What kind of a papaya is that? The GMO. GMO kind? Yeah. yeah. Uh, some people were thinking maybe that had something to do with it. What do you think? Oh, I don't think so. No. Not, not in my that I don't believe. Biggest question is why? Why are they doing it? They're mad over something. What are they mad over? It's the big question. Why are they doing it? That's, that's what this is all about. Why are they doing this? What are they mad over? You have to do this much labor. I mean, that's a lot of work for four people. I mean, that's why somebody said, do you think they are anti-GMO? That's mad. It that's could be mad. That because that they're could mad, be they're mad over thing. that. They yeah. could be mad over that. Yeah, there's not like any groups, anti-GMO groups, organizations. Is there such a thing, an anti-GMO organization? Yeah, yeah. There's some group in here that believes in power that doesn't want anything GMO. And there's also some people when you usually when you have, have a group like that, there's an outer section of that group that does stuff like that. You know what I mean? The people inside don't. It's the people on the surround. 
surrounding that will do that. Later, many of these same papaya farmers would lend their voices to the counter-movement in the campaign to ban GMOs. In the meantime, the GMO battles were mostly contained to labeling. It seemed like every year the state legislature would consider a bill to label GMO produce, and every year the bills would die. In 2013, those in opposition to GMOs pushed like they've never pushed before. Massive demonstrations were held across the state, including Hilo and Kona on the same day. The anti-GMO movement was reinvigorated. So all islands are standing up, all islands are saying something, and I hope the elected officials are beginning to listen. There's something wrong going on in our farmlands. And because we got chemical companies farming our lands and they're having an impact on people and nobody's listening and caring about what those negative impacts are. They're negative impacts. Not only are they poisoning our food, they're poisoning our lands and our drinking water. Well, we started in Haleiwa. We had 600 people. We went to Kauai. We had 2,000 people. We came to Hilo. We had what, close to 1,000 people over there. Now we're in Kona. I haven't done a march or a public thing since the Washington Peace Rallies in 1969. It's still the same thing of war and corporate greed and power. And it's gone on and on. And it's deepened now. Uh, they've taken over our political system. Um, Eisenhower talked about the military industrial complex. We now have the media in there the pharmaceuticals, um, they've even incorporated church and religion. And uh, it's all for greed and profit and, and not any care for humankind and what they're doing. Wake up so we can have the end of this corporate immorality. It's time for us to have healthy food, not be sick, not be inflamed. It's time for us, we have the right to know what we're eating. We have the right to our seat. Represent from Big Island Kona, this is Faya Redbeard, the original farmer man, representing all natural subsistence farmers. We don't deal with any chemical, artificial, all kind of GMO, we're getting rid of all that. Letting people know that this food makes you weaker, causes sterility within the generations for people that eat this food long term, as well as all kind of different things in the gut cilia. So we're educating the people, letting them know, and it goes farther than just the GMO thing. It goes into just the alkaline diet and the natural human diet that we're wanting people to achieve their highest genetic potential through eating the best foods for them. So I'm here representing the farmers, representing the reggae community, and I just want to do this for the younger generation right now. 2013, you know, lava ground sound system. Faya bun GMO. Faya bun Monsanto. We're coming for you, and we know you. Say in a very loud voice. Listen to us, we want a labeling bill at the legislature this year. We want a labeling bill. Ross Baker, Senate committee, says no hearings. Nishihara, Senator Nishihara, Agriculture Committee, don't want any hearings. And yet people statewide are saying we want labeling. So I don't know what's going on at the legislature, but we'll keep on saying it over and over and over and over. Organic gelato. Harry, come get one. With Ross. Thanks, man. We're going to win this fight. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we Ultimately, the bills met their predicted fate. In public meetings held after the legislative session, representatives explained why they took the position they did. For example, uh, sugar pops is made with GMO corn. And, you know, I mean, the sentiment was there was no way we we're going to get Kellogg's to label their Kellogg's sugar pop boxes at, for Hawaii that says contains GMO. So pre, pretty quickly, the bill got whittled down to only fresh fruits and vegetables. But the anti-GMO movement did not give up. In May, Hawaii Island joined the worldwide march against Monsanto on both sides of Hawaii's Big Island. Well, I have to do farm work today, so I couldn't go to Kona, but I want to certainly stand in solidarity with the people standing up, so I'm glad to see a turnout here in Hilo against GMO. You know, I've been a farmer for over 30 years here in Hawaii, and, and I've spoken up for the ban on Kalo, GMO of Kalo and the, and the coffee, but we need more. Uh, there's no question that Monsanto and the others would be trying to come to the Big Island, which is the biggest island and the, the most ag land on, in the Hawaii. So uh, we have to stand up now and, and try to get a ban, a complete ban on, on all GMO in, in Hawaii. GMO! 
So when you hear your district being called out, and we're going to do it slowly in chant form, please raise your hand so we know if, where you're from. And this particular chant that's going to close and bind this portion together in truly thankfulness and gratitude for making the walk, for driving here from wherever you came from today, or flying in perhaps. This is the chant that says, no matter where you come from, on this Mokupuni or beyond, when you live in an island home, your home is no different from a canoe. And when your canoe runs out of resources, it's like your mokupuni can easily do that as well, and we know that. But what it does say is that we are all bound together on this mokupuni by Mauna Kea. Thanks for documenting this. GMO is out. They're going down. It was around this time that Kohala Councilwoman Margaret Willey introduced Bill 79. The measure promised to shake things up even more in the GMO war. Basically, the geo biotech crew in Monsanto has pretty much conquered all of the other islands for practical purposes in terms of control of ag. They're present here, they don't have control, and the whole question is, are we going to let them take over? No! One GMO crop that would not be affected by Bill 79 if it were to become law, papaya. The transgenic rainbow papaya was developed and released to growers in 1998, and many say it helped to bring the industry back after ring spot virus had reduced Hawaii's papaya production by 50%. Kohala-born Dennis Gonzalez was recently honored by the governor for his role in saving the papaya industry. This gentleman here is the rainbow man. We all know that research takes time. And if you, if you do research to react to the problem, then a lot of times uh, you won't do it in a timely manner. But the papaya work essentially is uh, an effort that was done because back in uh, 1978, the dean... Uh, said that, you know, if the papaya virus went to Puna, it'd be a big problem. So we started doing the research. Now that's past history. Um, but I really hope we don't forget what it was in the 1990s when essentially it was almost impossible to raise papaya. We took well over 100 people testifying on the subject matter of this bill, which is Bill 79 regarding the prohibition of genetically modified organisms. The first day of testimony in committee drew hours of opinion. Weeks later, on a special day of decision-making, those in opposition to Bill 79 multiplied. Papaya industry farmers flooded the council chamber. A decision was postponed when Councilwoman Willie introduced amendments to the bill. Modified organisms. From Council Member Margaret Willie, dated April 25, 2013, the bill adds a new article to Chapter 14, General Welfare, titled Genetically Modified Transgenetic Organisms Prohibited, to prohibit the propagation, cultivation, raising, growing, sale, or distribution of transgenetic organisms, GMOs. Uh, Ms. Willie, may I have a motion to approve Bill 79? So moved. And file all, re all related communications. And, and file all related communications. My intention here is to limit the spread of GMO cultivation here on the island, but most importantly, to do so in a fair and pono manner by way of a number of grandfather exemptions for horticultural papayas and livestock, and I will go through those um, shortly. Uh, and at first I wanted to say that we're really, for practical purposes, the only Hawaiian island in a position to not be sort of overtaken, be, not become totally a GMO oriented. And we are an island with a vulnerable ecosystem and a vulnerable population. We are the first generation whose children are less likely to be as healthy as their parents. As far as uh, changing the enforcement to the Director of Research and Development, um, have you consulted uh, that department as far as their involvement? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to add a, a 
in terms of the budget additional staff person there so um, that's the Department of Ag and I'll see what their responses are and oh, so go from there. You're in the process of checking with them is that what it is? Okay, okay. You have come here with your busy schedule and uh, I'm really thankful that you came here because you showed how much you care about what's going on in government and when I got a chance to talk to the beef cattle, the non-edibles, the papaya farmers, I got to understand a little bit more about their situation. And when I look at this amendment, I see uh, the prohibition A to C, and then you got the exemptions A to E. So you got this big exemption and this little prohibition. So I'm thinking this pretty much just puts a target to all the local farmers. And it, instead, it shows that we, uh, if we as a body passes this, it shows that we think that all GMOs are wrong except this, 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 this. So it's kind of like, to relate it to you guys, it's kind of like the scarlet letter, putting that A for adultery. So putting that G for GMO on your backs, this is what I see on this amendment. This exempts everyone. However, we think it's wrong. So it's so the date was set for July 2nd. The anti-GMO force stood strong and the pro-GMO groups organized themselves. This rally in Hilo was one of the first held in opposition to Bill 79. I, I, you know, you look at all these trucks that are here um, and the, the widespread support, and uh, it just shows you the heart. You know, you won't find these people testifying at a, at a council meeting. They'll be working that day, but uh, they're out here today. We didn't want any confrontation. We wanted to just make a very positive statement that uh, we want the choice and we want the consumer to have a choice. Don't take that away. My name is Eric Weinert. I'm the general manager for Calavo Growers. We're the largest exporter of Hawaii Island papayas to the U.S. mainland. And we grow all rainbow papaya, which is a GMO papaya. It caught us kind of by surprise, uh, but it's, it's bad legislation. It needs to be defeated. It, it divides this community. It divides farmers. It picks winners and losers. It's saying that one group is good, and one group is bad and what we want to do is work together as a community as an island group to to build our future and so this is just bad legislation you, you cannot amend this bill and make it acceptable there's 28 points in the preamble that are just outright long wrong um, almost libelous uh, if you read it we don't agree with any of those um, uh, preamble points. It'll stigmatize the the papaya. Hawaii Island papaya, it really, it, papaya became famous because of the, the quality of papaya we grow on this island. And it's got a long, long history. And it was saved in the 1990s by uh, this technology where they put a small gene like a smallpox vaccination to protect the plants against this devastating virus. So, and the, the, it's still today the, one of the healthiest fruits you can put in your body. It was recently accepted in Japan as uh, it, it, the GMO papaya, the rainbow papaya. So it went through 13 years of rigorous study to prove that it's, it's safe to the environment, it's safe for human consumption, it's safe for animal consumption. So there is there is nothing but health benefits from our papaya. So to insinuate that, that the GMO is somehow unhealthy is just not true. So if this bill passes, it will make a statement that uh, the very island that made papaya famous is now saying it's, it's bad. And so it, it'll cast a, a stigma on all our customers and it'll make it very, very difficult to uh, continue in business.
the uh, bill is being watered down to try to find enough council votes to support it. And, um, but it's just not based on science. So people don't understand that it's, we're, our company wants to grow uh, some acreage of non-GMO papaya like the people that are growing it for the Japan market. To do that, they surround it with a, a buffer of GMO papaya because the aphid insect that ha would have bitten a, an infected ring spot plant cleans its mouth parts as it goes through the, the GMO plants with no ill effect, doesn't spread the virus. By the time it gets to the non-GMO plants, uh, it's not spreading the virus anymore. That's the only commercial way you can grow a non-GMO. So it reduces this pressure uh, from the virus. So to think that when you eliminate the rainbow papaya, no homeowner will be able to grow a papaya. The ring spot virus will devastate them. It's been reported that Councilwoman Willie plans to amend the bill further, likely to make more concessions to the papaya industry. It is unclear, therefore, if there will be a vote on Bill 79. One thing is certain, there will be hours of testimony in Kona. This is Big Island Video News for Tuesday, July 2nd, 2013. I'm Stephanie Salazar. Governments that are getting in interfering with our corporate policies. It's the people. So